Welcome to our first installment of Cougar Football with Kevin Donnelly. Entering his 14th year, not much has changed for the engineer of the program that has won 111 games the past decade, putting the Cougars in elite company. Football's football. Preparation's preparation. Players are players. Uh, kids are, are given all different gifts at birth, and you know it's our job as coaches to uh, teach them to be responsible, teach them to be committed, so that they want to be the best that they can possibly be in all they do. I think 14 years later, um, the tradition has helped because the, the bar is raised high. Uh, players know that previous teams have done well and uh, the alumni, the community, expect them to, to perform uh, at the same level. The bar has been set high, and after the Cougars finished 7-3 during the 2009 season, some speculated as to whether Coach Donnelly still had what it takes to be successful. But in 2010, USF responded with a 10-2 record and a first-round upset win over Lindenwood University. All the pieces appear to be in place for the 2011 campaign, but one very large question still remains. Who will play quarterback? We had a real uh, aggressive race, I think at quarterback. One, uh, Justin Bozier came in, fifth year senior, and uh, was injured to, in preseason camp. You know, hindsight's 20-20 if I had to do over again. I probably would have held him out the first week until he recovered. Uh, didn't, so, you know, he, he hasn't been himself. Uh, then I think it was a real dogfight with Miller and Beyerwalter. And uh, both of them were, were, did very well in their preseason scrimmage. And then uh, last play of the scrimmage that Miller was in, he got a shoulder separation, so he's out. Uh, Byer Walter is a starting quarterback, uh, not because just the other two injured, uh, but he's done an outstanding job. He, he's, uh, he's a guy that uh, has the ability to extend plays with his feet. Um, he was out last year uh, with a broken hand in the first ball game. Didn't, didn't play, actually did it in pregame warm up, so he did, didn't see the field. Uh, was a transfer from Eastern Michigan, and we knew he just had uh, tremendous ability. But preseason camp's the first time he's taken a, a snap with a defense that's chasing him around, and uh, he's done very well. I think the drawback when he first came was learning the system, uh, the decision process that the quarterback has to be able to acquire, to, to be the general of the offense. Uh, he's eliminated uh, tragic mistakes, he improved the decision-making process, still has the ability to take a play that should be aborted and make something good at it. He's a playmaker, he's got an X factor, a sixth sense, whatever you want to call it, and an exciting guy to watch. Uh, I'm anxious to, to see him in action on Saturday. Excitement can be spread over a number of positions, but we're going to start you off with a Victory Sports Network preseason All-American receiver from Harding High School here in Fort Wayne. Coleman is a factor himself. He's a very, very talented young man. Uh, tremendous speed. He's just a great athlete. Uh, the thing about Austin Coleman is that he has matured as a person. Uh, he's starting to uh, lead a disciplined life and do the things I think that a quality athlete has to do. Uh, I have a lot, I've gained a lot of respect for Austin uh, since he's been here. And I'm not talking about just the athleticism, but he is a person. Uh, he's a tremendous young man, a tremendous player. Not many guys uh, at, at any level will be able to catch him. Uh, he, he can run well. Uh, Wolf is another guy with tremendous speed. Frank's a guy that's really worked himself uh, to a point where he's stronger. He's faster, I think he's tougher. Uh, you know, if he get, gets a crease in the offensive line, he can take it all the way. 
Uh, I think he's worked tremendously hard on ball skills and securing the football and uh, taking on the leadership. So I, I anticipate him having a good year. Uh, we've got a number of good athletes. Um, you know, we're just trying to get them to do everything they possibly can to develop their full potential. Uh, got a strong offensive line up front. Good core of kids. I'm excited about this football game. Coach talks about having a strong offensive line that returns all of its starters from a year ago and is anchored by another preseason All-American and senior right guard Corey Cronk, who last year became one of four Cougars in the history of the program to be named to the AFCA Coaches All-American team. Needless to say, this year's unit may be one of the best in Coach D's 14 years. Yeah, I think it, it probably uh, would uh, go back and match up pretty well with the, uh, the 04, the 05 teams, uh, maybe with a little more depth. Uh, those were the great years where you had guys like Crin and Leisure and Jakobowitz, uh, Sherman at, at the line of scrimmage were able to control it pretty well week after week. And I think we've got some of those now with Crunk and Griner and Tuggle and Afghanis and Edwards, Mays, and got some big, strong kids that are athletic and move pretty well. And we certainly have a, a strong freshman class that we brought in that I think is going to be outstanding as well. Defensively, all but two starters returned from last year's unit that ranked 35th in the NAIA, giving up 338 yards per game. Well, I think last year was a transitional year. We changed systems. Had a lot of people graduate the year before. Played a lot of young people, first time guys. Uh, we do have some veteran experience. Uh, I think we, we've settled into a, a system now that really matches our personnel. I think we've got tremendous speed on defense. That's not one of our, our bigger defenses, but we got kids that can run, react well, that are tough, uh, and, and they get to the football. So um, I'm excited about it. A little different style than maybe what we had four or five years ago. Uh, but uh, these kids know how to play the game. I think uh, Coach Maloney, defensive staff, has done a tremendous job bringing them around. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see them with different styles of play and how they handle it. Ambrose will be a challenge because they have the capability of uh, taking the football, controlling on the ground, and yet have the ability to get the big play. So uh, it, it'll be a great uh, opportunity for us to see just where we are. Ambrose on Saturday. Making the most out of his opportunities has landed defensive end Anthony Moore on the preseason All-American list. Along with classmate and strong safety Eric Humphrey, many believe you're going to see a much improved defense from a year ago. Well, like Anthony Moore, Humphrey is a junior uh, and they both are leaders. And they both have tremendous speed, play very, very fast. Their motors run, run fast. Uh, and uh, tough hitters. Uh, Humphrey is a, a guy covered the deep ball, has the speed to do that, and also has the strength and toughness to be a great run support guy. Uh, both are very influential in our team leadership uh, in the whole phase of the team as well as our defense. Now this coming Saturday, the team will be challenged by the Bees and their fifth-year head coach, Mike Magistrelli. He was a defensive coordinator when I started. Uh, Todd Sturdy was the head coach, who's now the offensive coordinator at uh, Washington State. They've had a tradition of excellence. They've been a playoff team uh, almost on an annual basis. And we've had some real shootouts with them through the years. Uh, I think it might have been 0-3. Uh, score changed hands about eight or nine times the lead. Anyway, it came down to they scored under two minutes to go. We go into a two-minute drill, go all the way down the field, three-yard line, three seconds. So I sent out the field goal team. And uh, doggone it if they didn't block the kick. So everybody's from St. Ambrose is running off the field to celebrate. Still a live ball. Dumb me, I'm walking across the field to shake hands with the St. Ambrose coach and congratulate him. In the meantime, the ball's still alive. It was picked up by Andy Papagianis and uh, ended up turning into a touchdown. And we won the football game, and, and maybe the craziest, wildest ending to any game that I've coached in over 30 years. 
From one crazy outcome to one relentless pursuit, this rivalry has had its share of great moments. In last year's game at Darcy Stadium, St. Ambrose was up 17 to nothing at halftime. Just the second time the Cougars had been held scoreless during a half on their home turf since their inaugural season of 1998. St. Francis rebounded in the second half and route to a 31 to 20 victory. No, you know, we expect, expect to win. Uh, I don't think there's a game we've been going to we didn't expect to win. It's a matter of how you respond to adverse circumstance. Ambrose came out hot. We weren't hitting on all cylinders. Um, we were struggling a little bit quarterback at that time. But uh, I think down 17, nothing and a half. Uh, rallied the troops at halftime. Found a few things that we thought we could be successful with at halftime. Players went out, executed. Tremendous effort. Uh, you know, I remember in the, the goal line situation with Taylor Beek blocking and Bo Fry carrying the ball. And basically, the sheer desire went into football game. So I, I think it's been a great preseason camp. Uh, we're in game week. St. Ambrose is a good football team. We saw them play a week ago. Got a lot of transfers, new people uh, on both sides of the ball, primarily on, on defense. Uh, two guys that started against us a year ago or in the starting lineup. There are many that started a year ago that aren't even in the two deep now. So obviously they've replenished the shelf. They've gotten a, a number of transfers. Uh, Division one and middle guard, I think, is transferred from the University of Sioux Falls. So they're, they're talent. They're big, strong kids. A little different than what the traditional St. Ambrose defense is. They've always had the smaller kids and they're three, four, and they run real well. Uh, now they have a, a bigger type player to line of scrimmage and even a linebacker. Um, but I still think they, they attempt to do the same things. Uh, offensively, uh, they've got a, uh, a Division one tailback transfer from Southern Illinois who uh, has got great speed, good inside runner, good zone runner, inside and out. Throw the ball pretty well. Uh, got a big play guy, uh, receiver. Uh, got a nice, strong offensive line. So it's going to be a real challenge. I think you got a solid kicking game. Um, so I think it's going to be a real challenge uh, in all three phases of our football. The challenge is ahead. Here are the keys to success when the Cougars travel six hours for Davenport, Iowa. Got to take care of the football. Uh, gonna have to do well in the kicking game. Um, can't give up big plays on defense. Defensively, get the ball back soon to the offense. Offensively, take care of the football. Make plays. Um, bottom line is when it's all over and done with, you gotta score more points than the other guys. If you cannot make the trip, be sure to tune in to Catholic Redeemer Radio, WLYV, 1450 AM coverage begins at 1.45 p.m. Thanks for watching and go Cougars.